Well, good morning, everybody. Pastor Joe Pudding. Uh, Pastor Cliff Smith. And the executive producer, <laughs> director, uh, man in charge of cameras, lights, sound. PR. Mr. Jerry Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one of these days we'll get him out here again to get a good shot of him. Right. But uh, mm -hmm. we're at... Uh, we're down at Corey Herbrook's uh, coffee shop, beautiful gate. Uh, we just uh, are finishing up a great cup of coffee and uh, some sandwiches. It's a it's a great place to hang out, worship music. Great place to have uh, meetings or uh, meet with some friends. Uh, just good good solid place. And then the, again, the proceeds here always go back right. to missions instead of some big corporate or organization. Uh, it this month's. Uh, money is going to help children in the country of Jordan. So you know that you're always helping somewhere in the world, uh, helping expand Christianity, meeting physical needs, spiritual needs. It's a really cool, really good place. Cliff, how we doing? Doing great, doing great. Uh, Where shall we start? Well, you know, we're talking about Hebrews over our coffee, that passage there where it talks about fixing our eyes on Jesus. Uh, I'll take that. I mean, I, well, when we use that, somebody will say, oh, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Yeah. That's always the cop out. You know, I, I don't think I've ever met that person. <laughs> I've always heard that term, but yeah. I don't think I've ever met yeah. that person. No. I think you can be so churched up. Right. That you're no earthly good. So religious. Uh, yeah, uh, I got to be at this meeting, that meeting, this meeting. But I don't know that anybody's ever spent too much time right. with Jesus. And I, I think what happens uh, that that passage it's Hebrews 12, right? right. Yeah. Okay. Set your fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Our faith. Well, it's interesting because it comes off chapter 11, and you got to remember there's no chapters when this is written. Um, it's all the heroes of the faith. By faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses, by faith, Noah, by faith. Incredible. Right. Uh, but it comes off all that and it says, they're all there. It's a great cloud of witnesses, but fix your eyes on Jesus. Exactly. Um, because Noah wasn't looking at Adam when he built the ark, and Moses wasn't looking at Noah when he lifted the rod. Um, everybody was looking to their God at that moment. And Moses can't help you. Noah can't help you. They may motivate us, but we fix our eyes on Jesus. Now, Cliff, there's a lot of distractions. I don't care whether you're a pastor or, or a school teacher or housewife. Uh, some of the things that distract people from that. Well, living life, if you let it, will distract you. Basically, the basis of Christianity is Jesus. Uh, he made the statement, your life is not your own. Uh, when you think about it, we're formed in our mother's womb, brought forth, given the breath of life by God. Uh, when we come to Christ, he said, okay, you're in Christ, your old is gone, and your new is here. So. When you move off of the basis of your life being Christ, by that I mean uh, the words you say, the things you think in your mind, and you don't have to, you know, have a tight control on your body to do this. This is just, when I get up this morning, the things that I do, I, I want them to bring honor and glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when you open your paper or you get in a conversation or you go to the gas station and gas is nearly five bucks a gallon, uh, you hear this bad news, that bad news. The conversations in life right now are centered around the issues and the circumstances of life. And in Christ, he makes a remarkable statement in Jesus' teachings. He basically says, I have your back. If you seek me first, all the things in life that you actually need to sustain life, I've got that. Which takes the focus back to Jesus. Mm -hmm. well, and I think and certainly there's bad things. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's bad things that can distract you from Jesus. What you know, alcohol, drugs, right. sex, perversion, whatever. But probably the group we're talking to today, it's not that. 
the distractions that are pulling you away from Jesus are your, your money. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got too much. Uh, you don't have to go to church because you've got a boat, you've got a camper, you've right. got a second house. Well, those can all be distractions, which is why Jesus said, sell all that junk, give it to the poor, come and follow me. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having it, but when that begins to distract anything, when anything distracts from Jesus, it's a, listen, it's a forever battle. Um, because even, good, again, even good things, okay, I'm going to give my life for, for pro-life, you know, and I, and I will. I will. I will lay down my life to, to put an end to abortion, to help one child be born. I, yes, I will. But i got to make sure that, that even in that, that I'm not spending my time fighting abortion and not loving God. Exactly. I am fighting abortion, right. but the reason I'm doing that is because I love Jesus, and Jesus is pro-life. Jesus is the author of life, exactly. and it's so easy to get caught up in the doing of something. And you know, we're feeding people, so it's okay if we trample your emotions and feelings today, right. Cliff, because I'm feeding people. <laughs> no, no, it's not okay. Well, I, th I think that's the the trick. Uh, that we fall for. I'm uh, just thinking of Solomon's passage, it's the little foxes that spoil the vineyard when they're in bloom. Uh, if you're a Christian, uh, again, uh, we all have temptations and things, but mostly I, I like that. It's the good stuff. Uh, how many times in your role as lead pastor have you pulled back from your desk and said, you know, I've just spent two or three hours doing things that are good and important. But what I really needed to do is be with some people. Mm -hmm. I, I found that happen to me over the years more and more and more. You, you get caught up in good things that need to be done when our role is to train the saints to do the work of the ministry. That's basically the one, uh, one line job description we have. But how much of our time is spent not with people? And it can be the people that work, work around us, the admin across the, the way. Uh, being so busy in life that we don't do the one thing that we're told to do as, as Christians is encourage each other. Because mm -hmm. there's some mornings I wake up, I'm not encouraged to do anything except roll back in bed, you know. And when I get up, I'm not much better. But this fixing our eyes on Jesus, uh, go, it took a while, but it, it, here's my mindset. I honestly don't have a life that I can say is my life to live. Because that life, in two instances, was given to me by Christ. The first instance was at my birth. My parents lost two children. Uh, at birth before I was ever born. Well, okay. So now I'm born. Why? Why not the brother and sister that are not here? Secondly, when I came to Christ, He said, "I'm going to take all the junk away, and that old life is gone instantly." But it's taking me a lifetime to walk completely away from the life. So if I don't have a life, I don't have any money. I don't have any house. I really don't have any time, other than fix my eyes on Christ and allow him to live his life out through me, through this body. Now, before you send us thousands of letters and say, I'm not where you are, I'm not there either. Send those to Jerry Wales yes. at tomocachristianchurch.org. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I fail in that every day, but that's my goal. This, you know, the goal is where you arrive at. That's yeah. that's the well, and I think one of the one of the leadership principles that, that I'm working on, and I realize everybody's a different place. You're if you're a mom right now and you're trying to raise four kids, yep. you're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. I get that, mm -hmm. been there. Um, you're dealing with well, not as a mom, mom. but I have to, <laughs> I, I have to clarify that in today's <laughs> Thank society, you. please. Um, but but certainly your life may not be your own at work, so you're you know right. you're limited, but. But the part of your life that you do have control of, and sometimes you've got to fight to take some of that back. You know, they say, well, you, you need to prioritize your life. Well, 
Here's, here's what I've come to believe in leadership. A whole lot of things shouldn't even be on the list. And if you got 20 things on the list, well, 15 of them shouldn't even be on the list to begin with. Now, prioritize the priorities. You've gotten rid of the 15 ridiculous things. You give those to somebody else to do, or I'll tell you what, in a lot of cases, I just didn't do them. And what I found out, especially in the church world, if I didn't drive it, if I didn't do it, it just would die. It would die. And there were some things that needed to die. And instead of wasting my time, I could focus on priorities. I'm putting a commercial. Right. This Friday, uh, this Friday night is, is Africa Night at Tomoka Christian Church. And it's the most uh, audacious goal we've ever had. Our goal is to raise a million dollars in one night for the continent of Africa. We've got missionaries all over Africa. And it's, yeah. it's uh, literally, we're going to deal, it's, it's, there's the German sections, there's Arabic speaking, there's English speaking, there's uh, Germans, British, there's all, there's all kinds of parts of Africa. We're working in all of those. And with this million dollars, we're building um, seminaries, uh, we're building preschools in some areas, schools in others, we're digging wells, uh, we're planting churches all across the continent of Africa. And this is the kind of stuff that the church should be doing. But, right. but sadly, and not, I don't know if it's wrong, um, but most of the time the church is focused on the potluck. Now look, I don't care if you have a potluck. In fact, we're going to have a great dinner at this African night. It's going to be a very good dinner. It's supposed to be ribs the size of my head. Wow. So I'm excited about that. Um, but it's for a purpose. Most of the time, the church, well, it was a great gathering. A great gathering of what? You and your friends sat at one table. Other lady and her friends sat at the other. Visitors nobody sat with. And we call that church. I don't know. Paul actually spoke against that in 1 he Corinthians did. 11. Yeah. If you'd like to look that up. I'll leave that out of the water. But, but there should be purpose in church. I think because there's not purpose, we make up purpose. So, this Friday night, I promise you, Jesus is going to be front and center. You want to get your life focused? Come learn how to pray for Africa, give for Africa, and literally change the eternal destinies of millions of people with what we do in one night. Yes. And we had... Uh, Commercial over. Well, think back a year ago, about a night for Egypt, mm -hmm. and the outcome of that. I mean, yeah. even right in the middle of COVID, uh, the things, uh, what is it, planted 48 churches since that, yeah. that time. Uh, being involved, uh, again, in the priorities of life, the priority of, of living. Uh, we live in a community. The church is a community. And again, the purpose is great, and we are called to worship. We're called to come out of our homes and gather together. But if going Sunday morning and in that worship experience is the totality of your ministry or your work uh, I'll guarantee you you'll hear things like I'm not being fed uh, I'm becoming unfriendly you know we come up with all these excuses because we have done what we've been called to do but we have checked that off and we forget that that should be the extension of our life all week well and in so doing you're gonna fall for right the transgender foolishness, exactly. the gay foolishness, the uh, what else is going on? All, whatever craziness yeah. is going on, the Too much. Uh, you you name it, because you've taken your eyes off Jesus. You the average Christian, the, the Christian that's sold out to Jesus, comes to church one point nine times a month. Right now, that's the person that's sold out. So, what hour? We'll give you two. So two, two hours, and of, of that, 25 minutes is preaching. preaching. So you're getting about 50 minutes of teaching, and then there's a couple of good jokes thrown in oh, there. Oh, very good. Yeah. So you're only getting about 40 minutes of education, and the, world, the world's pounding on you the rest of the time, unless you and I are fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's got to be a personal deal. And let's face it, right now, one of the issues is fear. Uh, you know, 
we all know COVID was real. People were sick. People have died. And yet, we're living right now in a time where that's not really happening. Periodic cases are coming up, just like periodic cases of viruses and things. And People yet, have been getting sick as long as I've, uh, long, uh, I've long been, before I was born. You better believe it. The thing is, we're still trapped in your home, and I, you know, my, I love my home. Uh, I like to go there and get my lazy boy. In fact, Jerry, we're we're, we're trying to get lazy boys in here. I think we could think better. But anyway, I like to go there, but. You're not going to experience the worship experience without people, without someone to encourage you. Right. And it's time to come out. You know, we've we've had a lot of things come out of the closet that never should, but it is time to come out of the house and get back involved in the body of Christ because together we focus. Yeah, and get our, each other folks. You fix your eyes on Jesus, but oh my gosh, they're having a food drive. I need to be a part of that. Right. Oh, they're having this. I, I want to be a part of that. Where at home, again, if you're sick, you're traveling, I understand. But right. but if you if you can get out, you need to come be a part of the local body. I don't care where you go. That's irrelevant. Uh, but you need to go somewhere where you're going to hear the word and where you're going to get involved in doing something that's going to change other people's eternal destinies. Now I know people are going to be really inspired this morning, so I'm going to give you an opportunity. All right. I'm going to do a commercial. Go ahead. At 10 o'clock in the cafe area at Tomoka, we're going to have a party. It's called Beans and Rice. Tell them what we do with Beans and Rice, Joe. Well, this started back during COVID. Uh, there was a group on the west side of the county uh, a lot of migrant workers and um, just no food. Um, they work in the fields mostly. Right. And um, actually, it was my daughter Leah who was teaching school over there. She said, "Dad, we got to do something." Well, since that time, every month we pack. Uh, the staff does this. We pack about fifteen hundred to two thousand pounds of beans, rice, maseka. Uh, we pack it into pound, pound and a half bags and literally are feeding a huge portion of the west part of the county. Um, but again, it, and one of the reason we did it because there was a need, but we had the staff do it because I told the staff, if we're not willing to pack beans and rice, right. we oughtn't to be doing anything else. We can't ask it's, somebody else to do it. Right. But if you'd like to find out, I get questions all the time. What do y'all do down there in Tomoka? What goes on? Uh, drop by this morning, 10 o'clock, and grab a bag. Uh, you'll work along and meet staff you haven't met. And uh, basically you're going to see the heart of everything that we do there. It's in some way reaching out with hands to fill the hands that are empty, whatever area that may be. And, and listen, that's just simply because our eyes are on Jesus. It's not because we're trying to check a box. Right. That's the important Jesus thing. said, if you see somebody hungry, feed him. Feed him. So we need to quit checking the box to make sure we're doing good and just simply keep our eyes on Jesus. He has an amazing way of putting you in, you in places and circumstances that strengthen that faith and show you the greater need to keep your eyes on him. All right, let me finish with this. I think a lot of people would rather put a picture of Jesus up on the wall and sit and look at that and say, you know, I'm just devoted and I'm focused. And listen, I, I'm all for the, was it Martha, Mary, which one was with Jesus? Mary. Mary. Martha's in the, in the kitchen, kitchen cooking. And certainly uh, there's that time, but it's not to sit and stare at a picture. Right. It, being focused, having your eyes on Jesus means you have that time of worship with him, but then you get up and do what he told you to do. Exactly. All right. Pray us out, Cliff. Lord, we thank you uh, for the day that you've given us, the beautiful day. Lord, we thank you that you've said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, today I pray that we may focus on you and begin to just simply learn that uh, that's the greater part of our day. Uh, watching you, uh, learning, knowing you, experiencing the fullness of, that you have for us, realizing God that in every perfect gift comes directly from your hand and by your hand. And Lord, with the, the gifts, the good things that we have in life, uh, help us, Lord, to really never allow them to be reasons for not serving you. So bless 
our time together, the people who listen. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Next week.